Hi everyone, my name is Bob Dietrich. Welcome to the ADHD Toolbox, your resource for helping your child overcome behavioral and learning challenges and to self-regulate. Our special guest today is ADHD and executive function coach, Brooke Schnittman. Brooke, did I pronounce your last name right? You did, you're one of the few. All right. <laughs> Better than most. You no, know, I practiced on that. I wanted to get it right, so I'm so glad I got it right. I should have checked with you. You didn't even you. prepare with me, so good no. for you. I was, yeah, I was, I was practicing schnitman. <laughs> All right, well, Brooke, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So since 2006, I've been working with individuals who have ADHD. I started my career off as a special education teacher in the Long Island School District in Jericho. Mm -hmm. and I was a teacher for approximately eight years total, okay. and then I went into school administration for special education um, as an assistant director. So I have 13 years of um, experience working with a special education population, primarily ADHD, and um, graduated in 2007 from NYU and Students with Disabilities. I have many different coaching um, certifications for different courses, one for ADHD for teens and adults, uh, one for coaching, one for parent coaching. Um, so I run the whole gamut of schooling and learning and just never stopping. <laughs> That's awesome. And you moved uh, from New York to Florida uh, with your family recently and you started your business uh, coaching exactly. with Brooke. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, what do you do with coaching with Brooke? What is, what is your business? Sure. So I'm an ADHD and executive function coach. I work with eight-year-olds all the way through adults. So eight-year-olds, uh, which would be children, teens, college students, adults. I also coach parents. And I work one-on-one -on -one and also in small groups. I have an ADHD adult um, support group. And my individual adult clients have the group as part of their program for free, complimentary. Right. So uh, that really supports them and gives them accountability with other adults who have ADHD. Um, so I run the gamut of working with all different individuals with ADHD. That's fantastic. So um, this, is, this show is a toolbox for uh, parents and teachers that are trying to help their children with behavioral and learning challenges and how to self-regulate and really how to prepare them uh, for life moving forward. And, um, and, and handle the struggles today in the moment, what, what tools will you be adding today to, to the ADHD toolbox? Sure, so I am offering a 30 minute complimentary consultation awesome. for anyone who's interested in learning more about ADHD um, and or coaching and may have some questions that I could help them out with. Also, I will be providing anyone who reaches out to me a life wheel with an assessment to learn where they are currently in all areas of their life and how to strategize to move forward in the areas that aren't as high as they would have liked it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so at the end of the program here, we're going to tell you how to, you can get those, uh, those free gifts from Brooke. And um, uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Brooke's specialty, and, which is executive function coaching. Uh, we'll also talk about organizational strategies and building habits and how that works. And then also about um, other focusing hacks. How, do you, how can you uh, focus or help your children focus more? And that's a, a specialty that Brooke works with. So um, Brooke, let's start off with your first um, specialty, something you really focus on in your business, executive function coaching. So what is executive function and then what is executive function coaching? Sure. So everyone has executive functions. It's like mm -hmm. the CEO of your brain. Okay. It helps organize, it helps focus, prioritize, um, activate, shift from task to task, some of that metacognition. Um, and people who have executive function weaknesses may have a weakness in one or more of those areas. Okay. So um, I know you didn't ask this, but someone who struggles with ADHD would have a weakness in their executive functions. Is but not everyone who has executive function weaknesses has ADHD. Got it. So everybody can use it pretty much, or anybody with a, with a, um, 
uh, with a weakness there. Is there a particular part of the brain that's affected? And, um, or yeah, so it's the frontal lobe of the brain that controls mm -hmm. executive functions. Okay. And um, as time goes on, you can strengthen your executive functions with behavioral modifications, which is what you do and I do. Mm -hmm. But also as, as people age and go through different trauma, um, or just the natural aging process when, later in life, executive functions can get weaker. Okay. So executive functions are what? Like planning? Can you give us some examples of what they might be? Sure. Real examples. Uh, so organizing uh, papers for a student. So making sure that they have all of their papers in the right folders or binders, um, or they bring their materials back to school that they need, or they can um, organize a schedule of their week or their day. They, uh, for adults, maybe remembering where you put your keys, creating systems, um, just time management, uh, knowing what's the most important thing to do, shifting from task to task. So you may really like your video games, mm -hmm. but trying to activate your brain to shift, which is really hard for anyone if you're very interested in what you're doing, mm -hmm. to do something that you may not be interested, as interested in doing. So getting started, planning, prioritizing, organization, focusing, goal setting, metacognition. Got it, got it. So transitioning... Uh, from one task to the other is a executive function. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. So, th so there's tons of them. And if you have one, do you have them all, or could you just have like, like you lose your keys all the time, but you're still really good at organizing? Right. So it can show up differently in okay. uh, different areas, and you can strengthen your executive functions by uh, whether it's an interest of yours or working on creating habits in certain areas. Got it. So what do you see the most from children uh, that you work with, like parents struggling with their children? What are the, what are the, uh, how does it show up for the children, the executive function difficulties? So it's different for everyone, but yes. what I notice the most is planning for a long-term assignment. So a test, a quiz, a project, an essay, a research paper, mm -hmm. how do you, because time is now or not now for someone with ADHD. So seeing in the future is very difficult. Seeing past a week for a child is very difficult. So if they have a test coming up on Friday, what do I need to study from? How long am I going to do it? Where am I going to do it? And mm -hmm. how am I going to do it? So very often, Children will just look over notes and say, I studied. Mm -hmm. But really, they need to learn the different tools right. that are available for them to study. Got so it. There's so much out there, and not one thing is better or right for them. So exploring that with them, finding out what they like the best, what type of learner they are, are they tactile or kinesthetic, are they visual, auditory, all of that goes into play when trying to plan out what the best tool is for them to study. Got it. So now you're getting into the coaching part of it, right? Is, is that what you do in your business as you, you start to right. talk to them and explore? Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I went off a little That's bit. That's okay. That's okay. That's perfect. But yeah, that is um, a lot of what I see, just not knowing how to schedule their time, uh -huh. being time blind, not understanding how long it may take them to do a task, right. trying to figure out ways to manage their time, and um, just getting their materials organized as well. Right. Exactly. Okay, great. So, um, so you must have some strategies that you use that you can share with parents and teachers that are listening to this program. Uh, what are some uh, strategies that you use that they can also implement? Sure. So what I want to just say is that for building habits and organizational strategies, mm -hmm. it can take 30 to 40 times or two to four months mm -hmm. for real change to happen. Okay. Does that so, mean re repetition through conversation or post-it notes? or Through doing. Through doing. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got or it. even a parent having a conversation with their kid over and over again. It's mm -hmm. not going to really stick and real change to happen until that time. Okay. So um, 
to develop habits, it has to happen repetitively over time. So Got that's it. really where the accountability kicks in from a coach or from an accountability partner or um, another thing, which I'll discuss with you. But um, there's many different organizational strategies. One thing I suggest to parents is having their children have color-coded material. So one color for science, one color for math, English, social studies, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, now, a lot of the youngsters have their homework divided up into different binders, maybe in their backpack shoved in underneath, in a, in a pocket somewhere, um, shoved in a ball. So I suggest that they have a homework folder and put everything in one place so it's simplified. In the homework folder, on one side of the folder, it should be tasks for them to do, things that are do. And then on the other side of the folder, it would be things to turn in and things that are completed. Got it. Awesome. Okay. So color codes, homework folders. Exactly. Um, homework folder should be a different color than all of the other subjects. So if you have the primary colors, let's say for the subjects, maybe orange for your homework folder. So it stands out too. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, go ahead. What are some other strategies that, uh, that, that you could share with us? Sure. So on the homework piece, mm -hmm. developing a system of when they're going to be doing the homework, mm -hmm. where they're going to be doing it, what the conditions are, and what they need to do. Now, what, what do you mean by what the conditions are? So does your child like to do his homework with classical music on in the background? Does mm -hmm. that help him? Like what or the environment is. Has, right. Maybe it has to be so quiet. I mean, I can't work with music on, but I know a lot of our youngsters do. Got it. Uh, does he or she need a light on? Or do they like to work where it's kind of dim? So everyone is different. Everyone likes different environments. Some people will study at a desk. Some people will do it at the kitchen table. Some will do it um, on the couch. I recommend trying not to do it on their bed because okay. that's really where you are there to sleep. And if you start doing your homework on your bed, it's, you're going to have a harder time falling asleep at night as well. Got it, got it. Okay. So um, also organizing your homework onto some sort of schedule, whether it be an app, for instance, my homework app, school planner, if you have an Android, um, a school agenda book that most students get. So um, there's, you know, just making sure that it's visible for them. A lot of students that I work with take pictures of the board too. Mm -hmm. And the board, the board at, at school, the homework at school? school? At school, mm -hmm. so they take a picture so they have all the homework and they'll look through their phone. Mm -hmm. But that works really well for the nightly homework, but then what do you do to transfer that for long-term assignments? So again, that needs to go and be transferred to a bigger schedule, a weekly schedule of some sort. Got it, got it, okay. And so those are great for, for homework. Um, anything else you'd like to include? Yes, it can go oh, on. You can go on. All right, let's do it. So I think all of us um, can have our moments where we're not focused. Um, if something is difficult for us, we don't want to get started on that task right away. We'll do every other thing before we do that thing. Um, so some apps to stay focused, um, a homework timer app, a self-control app, stay focused without an E. There's a forest app that I recently learned about and it's really cool for kids. So the more you're focused and you're off of Snapchat or any other social media app on your phone, there's trees that will grow and you'll start building a forest. But if you start switching over to your other apps, your social media apps, then the trees will start dying. So mm. it'll be a visual representation that you're off task. Yeah, mine would be a desert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I totally, I need that. Have that option. <laughs> What's that called again? <laughs> Forest. Forest, okay, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, these are great. Yeah, there's also one called Freedom, mm -hmm. and it kicks off 
all of your social media apps on your phone. So these are phone apps. Oh, awesome. Okay. All right. One other one that is really good for kids and adults, it, it uses the Pomodoro timer effect. Uh huh. You know, the kitchen timer, the tomato kitchen timer, yes. uh -huh. Pomodoro tomato. So it's called uh, Focus Booster. And the standard time that they have in there is 25 minutes. Okay. Um, so you press an app. Um, so I'm going to pull it up so you could see it. It's really cool. Um, oh, my phone is dead. Sorry, we turned that off before. <laughs> That's okay. But, Perfect. Um, Focus Booster is an app that you just click it on and immediately it comes with a time. And it says 25 minutes and you just press play and you put the name of the task in there. Uh -huh. And it goes for 25 minutes. If you're done with the task, even before 25 minutes, you press stop and it will record how long it took you to do something. Oh, great. Okay. Cool. Yeah. If you take 25 minutes, it will then come up with an alarm and then have a five minute break. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll have to start the task over in 25 minutes and take, you know, finish where you left off or start off a new task. And it records everything onto a spreadsheet for you. So mm -hmm. if you're staying accountable to yourself, you right. can see if you're staying accountable to a parent or a coach or a teacher. Yeah. You can so that's really cool. That's fantastic. So if you're watching this video, um, go ahead and rewind it and, and mark these things down. And, um, and then you can go back and do them later. And Brooke, do you recommend people just implement all these things at the same time or is it just stay one at a time? Because it seems like there's a lot of stuff here, right? Teeny tiny goals. Teeny tiny goals, okay. You yeah, know, so explore with your child what app looks coolest to them. And yeah, let them pick, awesome. Yeah, let them pick. Let them be part of the process because they're going to be more willing to do something if they're the one being the creator and the author of their lives. And you know, that's the real thing in mm -hmm. trying to coach your child. You start putting things into their courts and asking them questions on what works for them and what doesn't work. So okay. yeah, explore it, have fun with it. Um, you know, maybe you can model it as well. So it could be like a little bit of a competition, like my forest is alive. How about your forest? Good idea. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, we talked about when, like what time, what time of the day kids like, the, uh, you know, because so some kids like to do their homework just before they go to bed and because it's quieter. Others like to do it right when they get home or even at school, stay later. Right. So it's okay to let them choose that. It sounds like, right? Yeah, as long as they're getting it done. I mean, right. obviously, it has to be at the best time for them. <clears throat> so if they're exhausted right mm -hmm. before they're going to bed, but they're telling you that that's the time that they choose, maybe you can have a conversation and talk through why they think that's the best time for them. Okay, got maybe it. Something else before that that's really mm -hmm. important to them, mm -hmm. like a sport or um, whatever it is that they have to wait until that time. But ideally a lot of kids will come home from school, they'll have a snack, they'll take a mental break and then get into their work. Got it. Got it. And then we talked about where, uh, and you're basically anywhere but your bed because the bed is like, you want to transition to bed so you can fall asleep, not fall asleep during homework. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And even, um, when they're doing their homework, we were talking about conditions, about music, not music, light, not light. Mm -hmm. If they need a focus um, toy, a fidget toy, that's fine too, as long as that's their secondary area of focus and they're keeping their primary focus on their homework. Got it, got it. So, and something to um, if they're sitting at a desk, there's different types of chairs. They could sit on a ball chair, they could do a stand up desk. Got it, got it. And so that was the conditions, talking about the environment. It could be the sounds, quiet, loud, you know, lighting, um, you know, what, where in the house, do they want to go outside or whatever, whatever works for them, right? And then I think the last one um, we talked about was what? And what, so can you explain the last piece of that? Sure. What exactly are you doing? So what is your homework? Right. And if it's written homework that you have, is that it? So um, do you have preparing for an upcoming assignment that you need to do? Or do you need to review your notes from the day because um, you don't really remember them or it's good to just repeat it? Mm -hmm. So what exactly is it that you need to do? Got it. So you recommend with parents, 
to let's let's review everything and then you can jump into it and if you need my help you come get me or um yeah let's review everything ahead of time as the week look at the week uh before so look on a monday most schools at this point have the week ahead mm -hmm. so on a monday let's plan out your week i want you to tell me how things are going for you um how are the steps of your homework going um, and not saying, have you started your homework or anything like that, but, uh, you know, what are you getting into? Can you talk to me about what you're up to? Those types of questions. Got it. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Um, now there's tons of other strategies. Probably we can go on another two hours talking about strategies. Um, is there, um, one strategy that is your favorite or maybe that you've seen work the most effectively? in any situation in life. It could be transitions, it could be homework, it could be getting out of a meltdown or, or um, you know, going to a birthday party they might be apprehensive about going to. Is there any one particular strategy that you, um, that you found most effective or that, that really seems to work well for you and the people that you work with? I think in general, all of the topics that you just mentioned, as long as the child or adult or anyone is prepared for them ahead mm -hmm. of time and things are organized around them, whether it be a physical environment or they're organizing their schedule, mm -hmm. there's less chaos and your executive functions can work better and more into play. Got it. Got it. So, um, so all of these things you want to create less chaos around you mean exactly. from, from an exactly. environment standpoint. So right. and that's why it's so important to just be organized in all different areas of your life. So when you walk home as an adult and there's clothes everywhere and laundry hasn't been put away and um, you have a, a stack of mail mm -hmm. on the kitchen table, right. how does that make you feel when you walk in? Probably not great. Right. <laughs> they give you some anxiety. So think about that for kids children, you know, if they don't know what's coming up for them during the week and they don't have their week laid out and they're just going with the flow and by the seat of their pants, you know, big things are going to come up and then they're going to rush and it's going to be chaotic and mm. they're not going to be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, and, and I talk about this when I talk with people about leadership and, uh, you know, we talk about vision and when you don't have a vision, things can get really um, unmotivating and it's hard to get motivated to, to take action in your life on the things that you say that you want. But when you have a vision in your life, it, you get super motivated to get those little things done on the way because you have that bigger vision out there. And it sounds very similar to what you're talking about. It's let's have a vision for the week or maybe the two weeks or the month and let's talk about it. So, so that way you can be less stressed and less anxiety. Exactly. Now the vision is great for a month or two months, but remember that children don't really see in the future. Uh -huh. They could see maybe in the week. So maybe uh -huh. a big goal would be great, but then planning specifically, it's either for the day, for a few days or for the week. So like Monday, sit down, let's go over everything for the week. Let's plan it out. And then yeah. Yeah. Every, day, every day let's regroup maybe and plan. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. And just going through that, I know you had asked me like what to say to a parent mm -hmm. um, or what for a parent to say to their kids about mm -hmm. their homework, some questions um, that are really good. And I actually sent this to some of the parents that I'm working with today. Um, instead of saying, do you have homework? What are your priorities for today? Mm. You know, for a daily homework assignment. Um, instead of saying, did you study for your science test today? What, I mean, what are they going to say? Yes. You know, you don't trust me. Of course right. I did. Right. Right. Say, what is the first thing you would like to do to get studying? Um, so it's reframing it and asking questions from a place of curiosity, open-ended questions. Um, if you know that your child studied, you could say something like on a scale from one to 10, how prepared do you feel for the test? rather than saying, did you study for the test? And then once they say maybe five, six, say, let's talk about that. What do you feel you need to get to a 10? So it's more open and making them be the controllers. See the difference? Yes, absolutely. And That's then, awesome. even, yeah, even, you know, did you get started on your history homework? Replace that with, what is something small you can do to get started? 
Oh, how and about something? Executive functions too. Got it. Got it. How about something like uh, what? If you were to take the test right now, what grade would you get? You know, uh, is that is that a good, a good kind of question or? Well, it's a tricky question because right. they're always going to say A, right? And well, it's like, oh, you don't need to study. <laughs> so, I mean, is an A a real indicator that your child studied that the best they can? Because mm -hmm. some of our children won't ever get an A or can't get A's. Right. So I would stay away from the grades. And also as a reward system, I would stay away from, oh, if you get two A's, you get this. If you get two B's, you get this. Because that's not a real indicator if they studied and prepared for some of them. Got it. Got it. So, so what are good in, what are good rewards? Um, in the if, sense? if you study for X amount of time each day and you know, all of those conditions that we spoke about where, when, why, how, mm -hmm. like, and you show it to me and you know, um, I, and it's clear that, the plan is outlined, so it's written out for the child and the parent to see. If you do this every day, you'll get a check mark, right? Yes. And if you have a certain amount of check marks, then perhaps you can have more time with your friends in uh, the evenings or on the weekends. Um, so it doesn't necessarily need to be an actual uh, monetary, monetary, monetarily goal. Mm -hmm. um, but it could be something that they want more of. Got it. Okay, awesome. So um, one last thing before we move on to the last point. Uh, what happens in a home, because you, know, you were talking about chaos and, and you know, clothes needing to be done or the house is you know, not picked up or whatever. What if you have two children that are both, um, both have symptoms in the same household and one is uh, a little more uh, struggling a little bit more than the other one and it's causing a little more, you know, maybe uh, yelling or having some kind of loud meltdown where the other person, the other child can't focus. Do you have any strategies around that? Sure. Mm -hmm. So everything really needs to be done in a proactive approach. So if your child is yelling and screaming, you can't get through to them at that time. Mm -hmm. So let that cry out, the yelling out, and then when they're calm, or you can say, I'll talk to you when you're calm and when this is over, mm -hmm. um, or maybe having a room where they can scream and yell and do their thing, and then know that when that's done, you will have a conversation with them about why they're acting that way, what's, what's happened, um, and how they can move forward. But that's where, again, the proactive piece really comes in, and um, coming up with a plan of action ahead of time so there's less meltdowns that occur. And also I suggest to parents to have meetings, family meetings, where you talk about how things are going, um, based off of those plans, what they see to be a problem. Right. Um, and collaborative problem solving. The collaborative problem solving can happen when your child is screaming and yelling. So for them to know that when they're done, that you're gonna be coming back to them and having a conversation about what occurred then there may be less frequent outbursts. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. So let's go into your last point, which is um, uh, other focusing hacks, right? Uh, some some other ideas for focusing or for, for being more focused. What uh, are some of the things that you suggest that would be easy for parents and teachers to implement with their children? Sure. So um, staying accountable is a big thing and the theme that I think I've kind of gone back to throughout mm -hmm. our meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you stay accountable? Do you stay accountable to a coach, a friend, a family member, to your teacher, mm -hmm. um, to your significant other? One really cool app that some of my clients use is Habit Hub. Habit Hub. And okay. As I've mentioned that to people, they've gotten really excited about it. Um, you put in your priorities for the day, things that you want to accomplish or goals, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the phone will actually alert you at the time that you're supposed to do something. And they'll say, did you do it? And you have to answer yes or no. And it records it. So, yeah. and it's really simple, yes or no. And then it goes into this app and it tracks your day. And then it tracks every day. Mm. And then it tracks the week. And it shows you where you were over the week. 
and then it tracks the month. So my client had sent me um, hers and you know, it was an upward hill in a good way. So you can actually see that accountability. Um, it's called, that was then, called what again? Habit Hub? Yeah. Habit Hub. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, an agenda book, a jotter. Um, a jotter is cool for uh, to-do lists because it's small. So, you know. One of those little um, small things that exactly. you will take us yeah. notes. Exactly. Yeah, I got it. Favorite shows. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yes, keep it small, keep it simple. Have one part um, of the jotter with a big to-do list and then the other side, the three to five tasks and then cross it out and then retransfer it. Okay. Or um, have a weekly calendar on Google Calendar and a list. You could, um, something that I've been starting to implement for myself is something called Planner Pad, which kind of goes back to that three to five list, taking a big um, to do list and then breaking it down each day to three to five things. Right. Um, so it's already laid out there for you with your appointments, which is cool. And as a mm -hmm. top down approach, people use Panda, pla uh, Panda planners, all different planners. Um, but more focusing tasks. Um, so we, we talked about the to do list, make sure it's achievable, make sure it's simple. Also changing your environment. So if you realize you're starting to get unfocused, take a walk, take a break. Okay. Go Hide, yeah. look at nature, take a deep breath, um, do some jumping jacks. You need some oxygen flow into your brain. Go to a library, go to a coffee shop, just change it up sometimes because sometimes, especially if you're doing things in the same environment all the time, it can get boring and repetitive. Got it, got it. So just, just shut it down, get up and do some exercise. Uh, how long do you think uh, uh, to have this, this interruption um, or, or this, this break, if you will? Is it like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, somewhere in there? Five minutes. And that five goes minutes. back to that Pomodoro effect mm -hmm. that I uh -huh. mentioned before. The, uh -huh. best, the thing, research has proven that if you do 25 minutes of a task and then do five minutes of a break and come back, you can stay the most focused. However, our ADHD brain sometimes gets really hyper focused mm -hmm. and you know, we can just um, grind out a task for hours on end. And it's one of the gifts of ADHD. So I'm not suggesting that you do it one way or the other. It has to be what works for you. Understood. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. And um, as I mentioned before, making sure that your space is organized. So mm -hmm. when you are organized, you feel that you're more ready to take on tasks and you can mm -hmm. find so, you know, Marie Kondo show. <laughs> yep. Yep. You either keep or you get rid of it. Right. If it doesn't fill you with joy, you get rid of it, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Got it. Got it. And then, like, okay. reward yourself for some of your accomplishments. So when you do something that's challenging, watch your favorite show after a certain amount of time, enjoy a nice bath, play a game, um, you know, take care of some other things that are, are good for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's actually online, it's called developgoodhabits.com mm -hmm. slash reward slash yourself. And there's 155 ways and ideas to reward yourself. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, yeah. So other focusing hacks um, in the morning, just kind of breaking it up throughout the day in the morning, it's really good to start your day with warm lemon water. Oh, okay. Yes. You were talking about this. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so for those people who like coffee, I'm guilty. First thing when I wake up, I'm smelling coffee in my head already, and I want to go make it on my Nespresso machine, froth the milk, and I'm good. But no, that actually makes you crash and makes your body more reliant on the coffee. Oh. And then you need a, your next fix for coffee and your next fix, and it's not this stable focusing. So um, science has proven that water with lemon is really good first thing you wake up to keep you focused. Some people do it warm. Some people do, don't do it warm, but mm. water. Water with lemon. With lemon. Yeah. How much lemon? Like a half a lemon, full lemon? I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I do a little lemon slice. Yeah, it's supposed to alkalize your body too, right? Yeah, I sometimes drop lemon balm in my water as well. That helps. Okay, all right. Excellent. Um, also... If you're drinking coffee, make sure you eat before it because your adrenal glands otherwise will be depleted. 
Mm -hmm. So it might feel good to drink the coffee immediately, but over time it will deplete the resources in your body to pay attention. Wow, I'm because guilty of all this stuff. Adrenaline, <laughs> exactly, adrenaline leads to attention. Mm. And okay, all right. Awesome. I got more. I don't know how much time we have. You know, we're, we're a little bit over now, but you know what? We, this is valuable information, so let's keep going. Uh, give okay. us a couple more, and then we'll get into your life wheel and your, your, um, free, uh, your free gift. Sure. So I'll try to go as quickly as possible. So a light workout or any form of meditation in the morning to get you focused would be helpful. It doesn't have to be sitting Indian style like this. It could be taking deep breaths, doing push-ups, squats, five minutes of workout that you enjoy. It's light. Okay. Again, your diet, eat healthy fats, omegas, green leafy vegetables, reduce your sugar intake. Mm, okay. Yeah, sugar. A lot of people are high on this keto kick. It does work to improve attention. It doesn't fix ADHD or executive functions, but it is something that can help um, with the focusing. Got it. Um, and if you do eat sugar, make sure it's with protein. Um, throughout the day, remember to celebrate your tasks and accomplishments and do another light workout or meditate. Um, again, your flexible seating, getting up, down, BOSU ball. Um, you can use an association complex to try to remember things. So if you forgot uh, to bring something to school or to work, mm -hmm. start thinking about a song or thinking about the action of doing it and visualizing it or listening to it Got um, it. when you're supposed to do that. Got it. Awesome. And sleep. Reliable sleep is very important. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, how many hours would you recommend? It's different for everyone, uh -huh. um, but for people who have ADHD, um, adults especially, I typically recommend around eight hours of sleep. Um, for kids, it's longer. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, well, Brooke Schnittman, uh, coachingwithbrooke.com, is that correct? I got it. And um, if you have um, any questions or you'd like to message Brooke, you can go to her website and click on contact, and she... Uh, we'll help you out. And, and Brooke, you have a free gift today. Um, one of them is a life wheel. Tell us about the life wheel. I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. Sure. I've created my own life wheel to uh, help people understand where they are in all different areas of their life. Mm -hmm. So it has a slew of questions and you could figure out um, where you are doing better than other areas. And then from there, you can um, ask yourself different questions and write down information on the steps that you're going to take to um, to strengthen those areas if you would like to. Got it. Find your weak spots, make them stronger so you're more balanced in life. Exactly. And I'm also offering a 30-minute complimentary consultation. So again, you can ask me any questions regarding ADHD um, and yourself and your child uh, and a loved one um, and learn more about it or about coaching. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, again, my name is Bob Dietrich. I'm with Brooke Schnittman, and uh, this is the ADHD Toolbox. If you want to um, take advantage of those gifts that Brooke offered, uh, then just click on the button on this page, and it'll take you right to those gifts. If you have any questions, uh, just get a hold of me directly, Bob, at the ADHDtoolbox.com. We'd be happy to help you out. Brooke, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for asking me to be on the show. Great. And thank you, everyone, for being on the show um, and watching. And we will see you on the next episode. Wonderful.